Hi guys, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here in Japan, and we're taking a look at this auction purchase of a 1986 Toyota Cresta Twin Turbo. So this one here is a 70 series, a GX70, and it comes with a Twin Turbo 1G GTE engine with top mount liquid intercooler. Now this car here is pretty similar to the American model of Cressida, although it has a slightly different name, Cresta, here in Japan, and it is one of the three models of the Toyota Mark II, or the X70. A little bit more on that later, but this is going to be an auction walk around. Bought from auction, going to be exported to the USA. We're going to do interior, exterior, and compare it to the auction sheet. So first off, this one has 123,000 kilometers, rather on the low side for the age. 1986 makes this car over 30 years old, and the car seems to be in really good condition for the age, especially in terms of rust. Now, as with any car that is this old, it does have some things. It's obviously not a new car, and so we'll go over that. The condition, the reason why people like these so much is it's a rear wheel drive, fairly lightweight sedan. The engine in here, later on they got the 1JZ twin turbo engine, and then even later on the single turbo 1JZ engine. It uses the same mounts, so you can swap one of those in. Interestingly, this car came with a clutch pedal in the trunk, and so maybe it was their intention to change this one from an automatic transmission into a manual at some point. Now the engine seems to be good. I did have a puff of blue smoke coming from the tailpipe on the first start, but then didn't get it any time after that, and then gave the car a good rev when it was at operating temperature, showing no signs of burning any oil. But we're not going to be checking the car in great detail. This one was bought from auction. It's going to be exported immediately. And uh, so the 1G engine, it's a two liter inline six cylinder. I think in the US, these ones got the 5M engine. And this is a I believe a better engine than the 5M. Of course, you got the twin turbos on here. Turn the engine off here because there's no sense in having it continue running, especially when it's a rather noisy engine. It's not noisier than the other 1Gs that I've got, but it's kind of hard to talk over the power of the engine. Now, there is an oil leak here uh, right at the uh, where the distributor meets the engine. The engine itself looks very much like the 4AGE. I don't know how similar they are, but they seem to be pretty similar, both Yamaha heads on them. The liquid intercooler is quite cool. You see here, here's the air intake, stock air intake here, comes into here. T style part there, and then we have two turbos. I believe that they are both the same size and they work in parallel. And then the boost comes up, comes into intercooler here, water in there to cool it down and then goes into the intake here into your six cylinders on this side. So pretty simple design. I don't know why uh, Toyota or any other manufacturer for that matter don't use liquid cooled intercoolers that often anymore. Toyota was really into them in the 80s and, uh, and the 90s and then these days it seems like air intercoolers are the way to go possibly because of uh, cost to manufacture. Now I left the headlights on for this one for a specific reason. Um, it has illuminated plates, but it turns out that it's too bright today in order to see them. In Japan, you can get the regular plates, like you can see on this Soarer here. And then you can get the aluminum plate, uh, illuminated plates like this one. Now you can't tell, even though it's on because it's too bright out today. But take a look. Uh, there, you can see it, right? So, at nighttime, these are really cool plates to have. Now, unfortunately, that plate has to be handed in when we deregister the car for export. Look at this, auto headlights. So there's a setting there, so they automatically come on when it's dark. Very cool for a 1986 car. Okay, first off, auction sheet here. And oh my gosh, it's so bright, my eyes are being scarred. I'll put it over here. And pardon me for the cicada sound, it's uh, driving me nuts as well. Okay, so 1986 Cresta. C-R-E-S-T-A, GT Twin Turbo, that's the original engine, 2 liter, auction grade 4 with an interior C, alloy wheels, power steering, power windows, 123, 221 kilometers, automatic transmission, they did come in manuals, but the manuals are getting really insanely expensive these days uh, for these old ones. Okay, original white paint, purchased from user, original 15-inch wheels, toll collection box, comes with a uh, inspection history here in Japan, you have to get your car inspected every... Uh, two years, so 2004, 2006, 2008, 2000, 
2016. And then owner's manual and spare key come with it. Here's the report from the inspector. Dashboard comes up. It's quite apparent. I'll show you that when we get to the interior. Seat cigarette burn. They're very small and they kind of look like wear in the seat because of the way that the seat has kind of a check, uh, like a fine mesh style checkerboard pattern on it. And one part is color faded. Interior is dirty um, and worn. Oil leak, that's by the uh, distributor like I showed you there. Wheels scratched, various scratches, dents, and shallow scratches. And then look at the body here. We have a large scratch here. That's A3. Large scratch here, A3. Uneven paint here. Large scratch on the front bumper. Windshield rock chip. And so for the age, I think that the body's pretty good. I think they were a little bit harder on this body than I would have been. Hello, Mr. Ant. Come visit me. I'll give you a sandwich. Okay, so about the car. Let's have a once around here. I have to say, the more that I see these 80s cars, especially the early 80s ones, the very first boxy ones, the more I like them. And looking at it in detail, you see a lot of really cool little features of the body. You think all oh, cars from the 80s are, are just boxy, bland cars, but there's a lot of detailing that's really neat, like how you see here the tail light semi wraps around there to a body line that follows itself up here so it's not a straight corner it has a corner and a corner and then that follows up to the back windshield here that has a corner in it a very cool design uh, section there the tail lights also look really great very much like late 70s meets early 80s look in the tail lights now like I said that there are three versions of the Mark II. So the Mark II is the regular one, then the Cresta was the luxury one, and the Chaser was the sports car version, or the sporty oriented one. So this being the Cresta, it's the luxury one, and then this was what uh, the Cressida, or the international version of the car, was based off of, although they never got the, the cool engine. And also some, some styling things are probably going to be different. I believe that the headlights grill uh, bumper piece and then the front lip there are all different and love the look of this front lip I think that it's very of the time very Japanese style Good look there lights at the corners nice little detailing there and uh, Chrome mirrors look good as well. It has these rain guards that are original They say Cresta on them at the back here and on the side 24 valve twin turbo stickers, kind of like the 16 valve sticker that you see on the 8.6s, and then Toyota Cresta GT twin turbo. That's stock exhaust down here. In fact, stock everything. Hello, minivan. Sorry, I'm in your way. Okay. Also, mud flaps. Yeah, very nice. And, uh oh, wait. I said that it's completely stock. I was wrong. It has dice. Tires are 2016 on this front and rear, and so they're basically like new tires. Very thin pillars on it because crash safety wasn't really a thing back then. This gives you better visibility and make sure that you don't get hit by anybody. Has a B pillar here. Door windows are really big. Lots of visibility out of this thing. Basically glass all the way around. Not like modern cars. Electrically folding mirrors that are chrome. Kind of a cool look to it. And it came with a free mirror. And I mentioned the clutch pedal. And uh, e-brake release cable. And shoot, one more thing. What was it? Oh yeah. Power window switch. Okay. Heading into the car. Doors feel great when you open them. There's nothing like 80s Toyotas to make a car feel really nice. Love the burgundy. <laughs> Toyota seemed to really like this color and navy blue for their interiors during the 80s. I think it's really funny. These seats are excellent. They look similar to Supra seats. And good condition. Now the auction sheet said that there is the cigarette burns in them. There's a few, there's one, two, three, four of them here. Okay, seats are not power seats, but you can adjust them. 
This one here is for the up and down here. This one here for the up and down here and then forward and back. They don't have the lumbar support, I think. Oh, they do. Yeah. That's not lumbar support. It's pinch style. Cool. Okay. So what do we have here? Power steering works well. Steering wheel doesn't have very much wear on it. This is twin turbo on it there. The gauges, I'm gonna turn the engine on so that you can see this. So early 80s, Toyota loved these digital gauges. They gave them up by about the mid to late 80s, but of course shows you your speed. This one here is really cool. It shows you your RPM in kind of an LED style. And then fuel there. Trip buttons, which gear that you're in, 123, 310 kilometers. This one here, E. CTS is your automatic controller for like, for example, snow or whatever. And then here's your temperature. It's at regular operating temperature. Retractable mirrors. Okay, controls up here for your stereo and your AC. And yes, the AC does work. And it's actually pretty cold for an R12 style. You can see the dashboard wave there. Let's see if I can find you. You can push it down. So you might be able to fix that, actually. I love the way that the buttons feel here. They even sound cool. Okay, looks like it's been smoked in, but not terribly smoked in. Here's something I couldn't find on the internet. Look, it says Thames. Okay, Thames is easy to understand. It's Toyota's electronically modulated suspension. And so if you accelerate hard, then it stiffens up in certain areas and when you're cornering it stiffens and if you're going straight then it softens. I don't know what PPS is and so couldn't find that anywhere on the internet so somebody please tell me if you know. Air purifier here. Highly pure air. Center console and over to the trunk and the back seats. And turn the engine off. We don't need you. I mean, we do eventually, but not right now. Okay, back seat netting looks like it's a little bit saggy. These back seats are a bit tight, but you have grandpa seat covers in there. Love that. Cresta. They're the official ones, too. It is kind of sad that the front seats don't have them anymore, but you still get good quality seats in it. Cresta Mark. Front seats view. Ouch, hit my head. Okay, let me just show you this corner too, one more time because I think it's cool. <laughs> Trunk, big and flat. Don't see that anymore. Nice. Spare tires off to the side there. Air filter for the purifier goes in the back there. And uh, no signs of rusties or anything in and around anywhere. Cool Technics speakers in the back. You see that? Unfortunately, this one here is missing one of its covers. Can you see it? Okay. And that is basically going to be it for this 1986 Cresta exported to USA. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, uh, to write me in the comments section. We do read those pretty regularly. I like to do it as kind of a break from work, see what people are writing. Okay. And you can check out our website. There's a link to that in the description of the video. So thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.